Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar series of the Center for Subsurface Energy and the Environment. I'm Ryosuke Okuno, Associate Professor in the Hildebrand Department of Petroleum and Geosystems Engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. So to learn uh, more about us, uh, please visit our website. The link is provided uh, here in the link in the slide. Uh, so, so we are a group of researchers focused on all aspects of surface energy and the environment. The center currently has 26 primary investigators and uh, they are working on a wide variety of surface applications, technical disciplines and the engineering tools. So uh, we collaborate with the industries in many different ways. Uh, one of these is uh, industry affiliate programs as listed uh, uh, here. So today the speaker um, is uh, working under the Carbon UT program. If you are interested in any of these programs, uh, please contact us. Our monthly webinars are informative industry driven webinars by researchers and collaborators in the center. The webinars are hosted the second Tuesday of each month afternoon uh, through Teams. All webinars are uploaded to our YouTube channel within a few days. And upcoming uh, webinars are um, Dr. Gary Pope on November 8th and Dr. Alberto Lopez on December 13th. So we ask that you post your questions at any point in the presentation as soon as the question comes up and our speaker will answer as many questions as they can at the completion of the presentation. So Dr. Omar Ali Carrasco Haim uh, joined the Maqueta Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Texas at Austin as a postdoctoral researcher in 2020. His research interests include the structural and the electronic modification of materials for hydrogen production and the CO2 reduction into variable chemicals. He obtained his PhD in material science and engineering from the University of San Luis Potosi in Mexico in uh, January 2020. Awards that Omar has obtained include the Context Postdoctoral Fellow 2020. Today, uh, Omar will be presenting integration of CO2 capture and the conversion for carbon utilization and storage. With that, uh, Omar, um, all yours. Yeah, so. Uh... Thank you again, Dr. Kuno, for the introduction. So hello, everyone. I'm really glad to uh, be presenting today the results of uh, the project uh, called Integration of CO2 Capture and Conversion for Carbon Utilization and Storage. So um, the project, this project is in collaboration with uh, more people. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Upali uh, and also the student uh, Fao Jun uh, for the, the contribution to this work. So first of all, as we uh, will know, uh, fighting against uh, the current uh, gas emissions related problems is a very challenging uh, situation and we must take uh, actions immediately uh, to make a positive effect in the, in the years to come. So uh, there is this a scenario in which uh, if we continue doing business as usual, uh, it's going to be very hard to evade all the gas emissions. Uh, however, um, due to international uh, policy agreement, we must be uh, uh, containing the rising of the temperature uh, below two Celsius. And in this way, we will have uh, the we will get to the net zero gas emissions point. So the main question here is uh, how to achieve this uh, net Need zero emissions, uh, uh, and the and the answer is even more harder than 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 the question itself. So one of the alternatives for one of the pathways is using low carbon energy. So uh, in this way, uh, some power plants can be equipped with carbon capture and storage units, and in this way we can have uh, the, we can decrease these emissions. Um, and the other part is also the necessity. Um, it's, it's, it's also present the necessity to remove the carbon dioxide or these uh, gas emissions, and not only is, is uh, storing this uh, uh, CO2. 
So we have to combine uh, the removal technique with the storage. So here's a landscape of how is the carbon capture uh, capacity, the current carbon capture capacity. So as you can see in this plot, uh, we uh, our capacity is around uh, 40 megatons a year with all the operational uh, uh, units. Um, however, in, and most importantly, uh, to achieve these net zero emissions by 2050, uh, the main target is uh, 5.6 gigatons a year. So we are very far from this uh, from this value right now. So there is an important necessity to develop uh, new kind of technologies to uh, for this carbon capture uh, uh, reaction. So um, I would like to mention one of the um, among the the current carbon capture technologies, uh, we can we can mention the the these uh, dedicated capture technologies. Um, uh, this is uh, one of the most important in the in the recent years, uh, in in which they are capturing CO2 from the air source uh, using a. Uh, alkali solution. So this alkali solution or the product of this uh, between the, this alkali solution and the CO2 is converted into uh, uh, insoluble form into a pellet and this pellet and then then is treated by heat to release the CO2 that has been captured. So um, even with this technology, there are some challenges that, that they are facing right now. So the first thing is capturing CO2 from the air. Uh, the concentration of CO2 in the air is, is very low, is, is uh, around uh, 400 ppm, and also is requiring high energy uh, um, high energy inputs, not only for for releasing the CO2 by temperature, but also for concentrating for con for the concentration of the gas, and as well the price can be as low as as 150 tons a year. So in comparison with uh, an estimated carbon tax in the U.S., is not uh, is is not a, an um, um, official value if I if I'm gonna say that in that way because it is not a, a right now it's not a current carbon tax, uh, but this value is around it's estimated around a fifty dollars per ton, so it is really high compared with this carbon tax price. So another another capture technology uh, right now it has been used for many years uh, now is the amine based capture. Uh, so for this technology, this uh, it is using an amine solution, uh, mainly is a monoethanol amine, a 38 percent concentration, and uh, and for this process, uh, there is a kind of similar uh, sequence as a direct air capture. The amine uh, is reacting with the CO2 in the absorber unit, and then uh, this uh, the product, which is the carbamate, uh, then it is. Uh, treated by temperature and uh, some pressure to release the CO2 and and regenerate this amine. So uh, for this for this technology, the CO2 capturing price, it can be as low as $50, $50 which is more uh, cheaper than the than than the previous one that I that I mentioned. And one important thing as well is uh, the around 70% of the total cost of this technology can be related as well uh, to the capture and compression uh, steps during the whole process. So for this for this technology as well, even though it is very mature one, there are some opportunities that the the that the uh, researchers are looking at. So in particular is uh, the the develop or advanced solvents uh, based on the some blends of, of specific amines using ionic liquids or even uh, uh, specific materials like surfactants or, or metal or organic frameworks. However, this technology is, is still facing uh, important challenges like uh, the energy cost, as I mentioned, not only not only because of uh, temperature uh, uh, releasing process, but also for the compression steps as well. So one way that we we see this technology is uh, is uh, an, an a process that can be similar to a catch and release. So uh, even for for direct air capture and uh, and the amine based capture. 
So uh, right now, after capturing the CO2, what we can do with this uh, uh, with the CO2? So I'm going to be focused this presentation and only the conversion. Uh, of course, there are some other applications as well, like the storing. But for this presentation, it's going to be only the conversion of these products. And why is what why is the reason for that? Is because from this CO2, uh, you can convert the CO2 into different products like methanol, uh, carbon monoxide, or even formic acid format. Uh, using uh, the electrochemical reduction process. So even more, even more important is this kind of products that you can get from the CO2 conversion. Uh, the, these products can be used in energy related applications. For instance, the methanol can be used as precursor in the DME production. Uh, the zinc gas production uh, using the electrochemistry, the, the, the electrolysis of the CO2, uh, it is also possible to control the zinc gas ratio that you are getting uh, uh, with, the, with the suitable catalyst that you are using and the conditions for the reduction. And in particular, the, the products that we are uh, looking at or we are more, more interested in are the formic acid or formate this is uh, the formate is the the uh, anionic form of the, of the of the formic acid uh, so for the formic acid uh, we can use it as hydrogen carrier and for the formate uh, it can be used as well as a carbon carrier uh, uh, with with high capacity of, of co2 so for this electrochemistry conversion uh, technology uh, we have some advantages like uh, it can be work at ambient uh, temperature and pressure. Uh, we can control the products as I mentioned uh, uh, before and also importantly can be coupled with renewable energy sources as well. Uh, as it's, also, uh, it's also worth to mention that the conversion, the CO2 gas conversion using electricity uh, electrochemistry it has a uh, TRL around six uh, TRL six so it is a commercially uh, available technology as well however the challenges uh, for this uh, for this uh, process as well uh, as we have uh, competitive reactions uh, mainly the hydrogen evolution uh, depending on the media that we are using uh, uh, as well the energy requirements with large over potentials as well uh, depending on the of the catalyst that we are using the material that we are the properties uh, that we are uh, uh, developing for these materials and the selectivity as well we can have a uh, several kind of uh, products uh, in, in, in there in the process so our motivation is uh, based on the current process that it is uh, right now like i mentioned before is a catch and release process in which the amine is capture is capturing the co2 and then we have to release again the, we have to release the co2 gas again uh, to be fit into a co2 electrolyzer this kind of uh, uh, the, this kind of process is is currently used uh, in some uh, uh, in so many ways however our focus is uh, on this way so trying to capture the co2 at the, at the same time that we are producing uh, some chemical that we can use further or we can use in uh, right in that way to make a, a different kind of reactions so in this way uh, our approach is um, capture the co2 and in situ convert convert the co2 into bicarbonate and this bicarbonate can be fit into electrolyzer or this bicarbonate can be used for for uh, extra uh, applications or as a precursor for different uh, uh, chemical products as well and and as well we are coupling all the bicarbonate uh, capture production with the bicarbonate, as I mentioned, the, bicarb the bicarbonate uh, electrolysis to produce, in this case, the formic acid and the formate. And as well as this product, uh, we can uh, have a, a different uh, products, as I mentioned before, methanol, carbon monoxide. So this is our uh, research, research focus uh, for this stock. And importantly, why bicarbonate? Uh, from from the uh, capture process, we uh, can argue that uh, capturing CO2 uh, in this way or converting the CO2 uh, to bicarbonate while capturing, it can be uh, it can consume less energy than, for instance, uh, we compare the process for direct air capture in which are getting uh, potassium bicarbonate as 
the pellets. Uh, we will require less energy to produce the bicarbonate. And as well, uh, based on the capture process, this uh, conversion can be uh, performed by tertiary and sterical hindriamines. And in the side of the conversion as well, uh, it has been reported uh, that that using or yeah, using bicarbonate for the electrolysis uh, to produce a specific products, in this case, a formic acid, uh, require less energy than using CO2 gas. So, uh, and as well, using bicarbonate, which is a, a liquid feed, we don't need to be uh, putting CO2 into the system and all the all the things related to to gas handling. So for the CO2 capture uh, experiments, uh, the setup is uh, the one that I that I show in here. We are just controlling. Uh, we are just controlling uh, the CO2 flow rate we are fixing, and we are measuring uh, the pH temperature, and we are using some uh, specific capture solutions at specific concentrations. And for the CO2 loading, which means uh, the amount of CO2. Uh, the amount of CO2 or the mole of CO2 per mole of, of the of the capture uh, of the capture solution. Uh, we are using a titration and an analytical method using a titration uh, with hydrochloric acid uh, using the samples uh, collecting by the uh, during the capture process. So um, one of uh, our focus is uh, to use a surface active amine and why why we are choosing uh, surface active amine uh, so in particular we are interested in the in the post in the post composure capture they are using amines um, the most common is the monoethanol amine uh, however if we increase if we use a, a diamine like in this case DMAPA we will have an extra capacity for carbon capture um, and in particular because we are interested in bicarbonate uh, as I mentioned before tertiary amines are suitable to carry out this uh, conversion at the same time. So uh, in this case, uh, based on our, exp our preliminary experiments, we can see that the DMAPA can have uh, more CO2 loading, as I told you, because we have these two amine groups uh, to the um, in, in the molecule that can be acting, one primary amine, one and another the tertiary. However, um, one of the uh, interesting thing is what happen if we can convert this primary amine into a tertiary amine and have uh, two amine groups, a uh, tertiary amines, with an extra feature, which uh, in this case would be uh, like surfactant, uh, uh, doing a propoxylation of this amine, uh, amine, amine group. So by doing this, we can have, as I mentioned, uh, two tertiary amines in the group will uh, that will uh, enhance our, our bicarbonate production at the end of the capture process. And as well, uh, uh, it can uh, lower the surface tension for the CO2 and, and most importantly, facilitates the, ma the CO2 mass uh, transfer. Remember, we are talking about gas and then producing a liquid in the, in the solution. So it is important to have this, uh, uh, to reduce this gap between the solubility problems. So in our experiments, the effect of the PO, uh, we are uh, we are uh, trying we are describing uh, the PO effects in terms of uh, of the CO2 capture mass. Like in 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 this case, it is uh, it is possible to have a high CO2 capture uh, capacity uh, by the PO uh, by adding the PO groups to the to the amine molecule and however it's important to define an optimal concentration as we are increasing the PO level uh, there's also a negative effect and this is then this uh, might be related to the optimal concentration due to the solubility and hydrophilic properties of uh, of the CO2 the the media and the and the amine by itself um, and and also the loading amount as well. One important thing is uh, uh, we are observing like uh, uh, I think we are increasing the PO group. Uh, it is it is uh, it is important to mention that the CO2 loading capacity. We are not increasing this loading capacity. We are just uh, uh, 
uh, trying, uh, we are just observing a uh, limited uh, CO2 loading capacity by using the PO, uh, uh, by including the PO in the in the amine. So, um, of course, because now we don't have a, a, a primary amine, uh, we have a tertiary amine, and uh, uh, by the incorporation of the PO groups, and and importantly, is uh, the the PO group. The the main role of the PO groups is related to the CO2 solubilization, as I mentioned here. It, it is important to control the 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 concentration to have a proper effect on the CO2 solubilization. And to confirm this, we perform an experiment in which uh, we use a. Uh, uh, um, a blend between this DMAPA and uh, and uh, um, a surfactant. In the, in this case, we uh, work with the glycerol uh, as well, attached with the with the the PO groups. And uh, from these plots, we can see that there is no effect if we are doing some uh, blends between surfactant and the amine as well. The loading, uh, the CO2 loading capacity, there is no effect as we are uh, uh, changing the concentration and the PO group level. So based on this result, we can for sure conclude that the PO or the PO groups that are helping to dissolve more CO2 and then the CO2 is going to be effective to react with the amine, with the nitrogen part of the amine. So for sure, uh, this is something that I that I would like to mention in in literature. There are reports in which the, this PO group, of, the PO groups from the surfactants, can be uh, react with CO, can react with CO2 and make a, a a bond, an intermediate as well, and in that way help uh, uh, help the 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 carbon capture capacity of the amine. But based on these results, uh, the only or the main effect of the PO groups is uh, the solubilization of the CO2. So based on the, based on this, uh, we perform some NMR analysis for the capture solution. So in this case, we are observing the bicarbonate and uh, carbamate concentration over the time using the DMAPA. It is important to mention that because we have a primary and a tertiary amine in the DMAPA molecule, uh, we're, we were expecting to observe both compounds, uh, bicarbonate and carbamate. And for the NMR analysis, it is possible to confirm that, that we are evolving, we are producing this bicarbonate uh, 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 product from the CO2 capture process. And when we when we test uh, when we tested uh, the the DMAPA, the surface active amine with the PO groups, now we observe. Uh, different things. So the first thing is uh, the bicarbonate uh, conversion now uh, it is almost uh, around the 80% uh, of the of the uh, for the for the 6PO uh, level in this surface active amine. And as well uh, it is important to mention that from the NMR results it is it it, it was confirmed that only bicarbonate product uh, was uh, producing so in this case, uh, we confirmed the in situ bicarbonate generation uh, during the CO2 capture process, and as well, it is important to mention that based on the on the or compared the, the using the PO groups compared to the DMAPA, we are achieving uh, or we are enhancing the the capture or the conversion capacity of around 30% compared to the DMAPA process. Uh, DMA the MAPA uh, compound. So it is possible for us to uh, confirm based on this study that, that is feasible to capture the CO2 at the time that we are converting into bicarbonate. So um, yes, uh, and and now moving on to the conversion uh, conversion part, uh, I would like to mention that the bicarbonate electrolysis uh, today, uh, as I mentioned, is it is uh, uh, it is a process, and we and 
in which we are not using the CO2 gas. We are, use, we are just using the liquids. And in literature, there's a process uh, as well uh, that, has been, that, that has been studied by uh, different uh, researchers. So they are, they are obtaining Faraday efficiencies uh, up to 80% and as well uh, uh, moderate current densities compared to the uh, gas diffusion electrodes or the, uh, the cells that, we are, that they are using uh, um, uh, CO2 gas as feed. Uh, and, and based on this, this is the setup that, that we use for the electrolysis. We are using uh, con uh, bicarbonate, uh, bicarbonate solution, a 0 0.5 molar. We are using an analyte as a potassium hydroxide. We're using the membrane that, that allow us to, to flow the protons from the anode side to the, to the cathode side and, and proceed with the redox, uh, with a reduction reaction. And for the working electrode, we are, uh, we tested some uh, thin oxide electrocatalyst in, pow in, in powder form, form uh, with, this, uh, um, with these conditions. So the first thing, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the main, one of the most important uh, parts for the electrochemical conversion is to be able to uh, produce efficient electrocatalyst. So in this case, uh, we synthesize the thin oxide based on hydrothermal reaction uh, uh, using uh, uh, thin chloride. Uh, this is the conditions, and of course, an, 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 a, a thermal treatment at the end of the reaction. So, uh, from the characterization, it's possible to observe that we obtain the thin uh, the thin oxide from from this uh, synthesis, uh, and as well, we were able to characterize uh, the performance of this uh, uh, thin oxide electrocatalyst uh, using uh, chrono amperometry uh, test in when in which we obtain a really low current densities. Uh, around 2.5 milliamperes per centimeter square, um, which is uh, low compared to the values that I that I mentioned before, around 100 or even um, uh, uh, 150 milliamperes per centimeter square. So, uh, considering this, uh, we we perform some electrocatalyst modifications as well for 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 the thin oxide uh, material, in which we incorporate uh, bismuth and indium. Uh, during the synthesis to make a, a, a catalyst with the different uh, properties, with the different features. So um, in, in this way, we observe that what we are increasing or we're, we're putting um, these extra uh, cations, we are, uh, we are getting a, a different performance and, 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 and we are in, um, increasing the performance of this uh, uh, thin oxide material in the case of bismuth as well, and the case of uh, the combination of bismuth and indium as well compared to the, to the bare um, uh, thin oxide. So um, we carry out the electrolysis into format, as I, as I mentioned uh, before. Uh, in this case, we perform a chrono a parametric test at fixed potential, zero, uh, minus 0 0.9 volts for one hour using only bicarbonate uh, solution with no CO2 uh, gas. And what we observe in, in this case is uh, the production or the Faraday efficiency are, are low for the three materials uh, with the maximum, of course, uh, we were expecting with the bismuth, uh, the combination of bismuth and thin oxide around 80, 80.4% 80, 80. Uh, and, and the lowest is the, the bare material as, I, as we were expecting based on the, on the LSB analysis. So it is important to mention here that, that we are using uh, the, the cell, uh, we are using an H type cell uh, and we are using powder forms as well. Uh, I, and uh, of course, there are some mass transfer limitations. There are bubbles uh, generations. So uh, we must uh, optimize this for a uh, long testing uh, performance as well. So this is something that we are uh, taking into consideration for these results. So um, one thing, one important thing is uh, even though when they are using uh, bicarbonate uh, 
uh, by company solution solutions uh, in in some reports they are using CO2 uh, to bubble or to saturate this uh, this this bicarbonate solution and then perform the electrolysis. So just to compare, we we did the same experiments. We sat, we saturated the bicarbonate solution with CO2 gas, and we observe an increment of the current density compared to the to the current density that we had uh, previously at different uh, potentials. But when we when we perform the uh, the NMR uh, characterization, uh, looking at the formate production, we couldn't observe any peak related to the formate um, anion in the, in the NMR analysis. So that means that uh, the CO2 saturated solution for this system is not generating formate uh, using the the conditions, uh, these conditions, and using uh, this electrocatalyst. So it is also possible uh, to mention that this selectivity of that the selectivity uh, change uh, towards gaseous products in this case, uh, which can be carbon monoxide or even hydrogen. So uh, based on these results, we confirm that for the for the bicarbonate electrolysis to produce formate, it is not necessary bubbling CO2, uh, at, at least with this uh, with these conditions. So the other thing to um, that we test uh, uh, the, the, that we test to increase the performance uh, of this uh, uh, of this electrolysis uh, regarding the 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 mass transfer limitations, we prepare an electrocatalyst uh, with a, with a, a larger catalyst loading in this case, and we perf we use a, co a copper foil uh, to uh, deposit the catalyst that we already prepared and to observe the, the performance that we were uh, obtaining for this, uh, uh, for this reaction. So in this case, for this, uh, for this chronoamperometry test, uh, we use the bicarbonate, uh, the bicarbonate solution uh, with no CO2, and we observe an increment, uh, an increment in the Faraday efficiency for the products. So uh, it is also possible to uh, to mention that with these results, it is uh, necessary to optimize the conditions uh, to to. Uh, Produce uh, high Faraday efficiencies as well high current densities during the bicarbonate electrolysis to be uh, comparable with the one that are reported in literature right now. And uh, and but it is possible uh, as long as we are increasing the reactive sites uh, for for the for the process. So yeah. So as a summary, um, this. Uh, I would like to mention that this uh, these results are uh, we perform these results for uh, uh, to study uh, the feasibility of this uh, pathway of this research uh, uh, focus in which we capture the CO2, com uh, we are converting the CO2 while capturing into bicarbonate, and then we can use the bicarbonate to produce uh, different chemicals as formic acid or formate or even uh, carbon monoxide or methanol, depending, uh, uh, controlling the reactions. So um, as well, we corroborate this, uh, this process uh, uh, right now, and we are um, in, we are taking into consideration so many things uh, for the ongoing work right now uh, regarding the CO2 capture into bicarbonate. Uh, we're studying uh, the, the, the mechanism, of course, to properly address the concentration and the concentration effects on the surface active amines. Um, what are the limitations for the concentration, the solubility of the CO2, and and therefore increase this performance that we already showed, and as well to study the kinetics for the for the for the for the reaction as well. Um, it is also 
uh, we're working on the reactor uh, optimization as well. We are trying to include more analytical instrumentation for this uh, to make a mass balance more accurate uh, as well. Uh, one important thing is to uh, uh, the evaluation of, uh, of the separation of the products from the from the capture process. Uh, right now, based on our knowledge, we are uh, trying to or we're exploring the membrane solutions uh, to separate uh, the the protonated amine and the bicarbonate uh, instead of having a temperature releasing process. And for the power of uh, the electrolysis uh, conversion, we are uh, as well considering the cell optimization. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are uh, right now we have demonstrated that it's possible to perform the bicarbonate electrolysis uh, to produce formate. Um, however, we are still limited by the catalyst loading uh, because of the mass transfer as well. The 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 bubbles the generated bubbles during the process as well. Um, uh, one important thing here uh, to mention is uh, we are only evaluating the liquid products uh, right now because uh, oh, because the system that we have at, at this moment. However, uh, we're still uh, thinking about the gas product analysis integration, and it we must do it to confirm all the products that we are getting and the the uh, and to have the all the the complete scenario for the electrolysis setup. And as well, the electrocatalyst characterization to to increase the surface active sites. Um, and as well, we are we are planning to do a collaboration with with another faculty members, in this case with uh, Dr. Han Brandt from the Department of Chemistry to locally study uh, the active sites of the catalyst to understand the mechanism and, and to optimize uh, the surface uh, to achieve uh, a better performance. And of course, and, and most uh, important is uh, to integrate both units, the capture and the conversion. Uh, at this moment, we are working uh, in a separate uh, uh, processes. However, of course, uh, our goal is to integrate both units in just in just a single one and and uh, and explore this uh, uh, new um, uh, setup for the carbon capture and conversion uh, application. So uh, finally, this is the research group. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Uh, Okuno uh, and as well all the all the people in the in the group. Uh, all of them uh, they're helping uh, and in different ways to achieve the uh, to complete these results. And uh, thank you very much for your attentions, and I'd be willing uh, to answer all the questions. Thank you. Is there a relationship between the, the purity of the resulting CO2 gas and the cost of its purification? Uh, what purity of CO2 gas is the most economical, uh, uh, viable or optimal? 100% CO2, 99%? Okay. Well, thank you very much for this uh, question. Um, of course, of course, uh, we right now we have tests only with uh, uh, the high uh, purity CO2 uh, uh, gas. Of course, uh, as long as we are uh, reducing the purity or changing the purity, uh, the economical, the, the economic are going to change. Uh, however, at this at this point, um, I must I must say that most of the process before going to the capture process, they're required to adapt the concentration. So in this case, there is a, something that we for sure need to explore uh, eventually. Uh, but right now we are only using 100% uh, 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 pure CO2. Uh, of course, we would like to make uh, um, uh, some uh, combination, some mixtures for the gases and address this uh, very good, very good comment. But Right now, is uh, we're using only 100% uh, pure CO2, and of course, uh, we were expecting to have more more changes in the and with this uh, new test. Yeah, uh, uh, the question is: Have you looked at the thermodynamics and corresponding energy requirements 
to remove the CO2 from around 12% CO2 flue gas stream, much less from 100 ppm uh, from CO2 atmosphere, how much energy is required? Uh, well, for sure, uh, we haven't done this uh, thermodynamic uh, thermo calculation uh, so far, but that would be good uh, point to consider uh, based on the uh, based on we are focusing on the CO2 uh, capture based on the flue gas, but but yeah, um, we we haven't done this uh, um, these calculations yet, but for sure this is something that we will uh, consider when we are doing the whole uh, the complete whole uh, study. Do you have an idea on the energy and cost savings when combining capture and conversion? In your process compared to conventional method, uh, well, this is this is something that uh, that we have uh, we have looked for uh, for uh, so uh, for a long time, and uh, for sure to compare this uh, this uh, uh, um, this alternative methods. Uh, I would say, uh, in particular, for the for using the electrochemical conversion process uh, and capturing CO2 uh, through the bicarbonate pathway and, and using the electrochemical conversion process to produce only formate is uh, the reduction in the cost may be uh, around 40, 30 percent uh, compared to the to the conventional one, at least as uh, what the, the thermodynamics are telling us, because there is really hard to uh, right now do a calculation based on these results, but based on literature, uh, most of the uh, thermodynamic requirements are saying and uh, uh, that we can decrease around 30, 40 percent of the energy consumption uh, when we are coupling as I, again, as I, I mentioned, we're coupling the CO2 capture into bicarbonate and then transform the CO2, uh, the, sorry, this bicarbonate into uh, a formic, uh, formic acid. So this is what uh, what we for sure we have looked in literature so far. Have you ever scaled up your method to large scale of capture, such as 100 million uh, metric ton per year? Any large scale market for bicarbonate and uh, and formate. Um, well, uh, for sure, we haven't explored that uh, conditions yet. Uh, we are just uh, starting uh, right now uh, with the lab scale experiments. Uh, however, uh, based on this and based on other results that, that we are uh, been discussing uh, right now, uh, we have a uh, um, collaboration or we're planning to do a collaboration with uh, with some industries uh, as well uh, to to uh, address this uh, this uh, questions about uh, scaling up the process for both uh, units for the for the capture part and for the conversion as well so so far the only the the only information a large scale uh, that I that I can mention uh, is uh, for sure the the bicarbonate electrolyzers we can we can be sure that, that it can be scaled up uh, eventually. Uh, a, a lot of uh, industries uh, right now are working with uh, the electrolysis, so I'm I'm sure that that the the scaling up process will be will be done uh, um, uh, eventually. And for the capture, is is it is it is. It is I guess it is is a matter of time to have these uh, values right now. Uh, so yeah, thank you for the for the question. Really, really good uh, uh, comment. Thank you. There's something that I like. Uh, I would like to mention very quickly is uh, we just started this uh, this uh, experiments uh, um, uh, and uh, the last the the. The last month, so we've been working uh, with the idea and now with experiments for almost uh, for almost a year. So for sure, we have a a, a long way to go uh, regarding this uh, with both uh, units, the capture and the conversions as well. And we are um, uh, this is a new uh, research area from uh, uh, from the PI, which is uh, Dr. Okuno. So we've been uh, dealing with uh, most of the uh, 
of the things. And for sure, uh, during this short time period, uh, we've been uh, looking at these results, but eventually we will uh, we will have more uh, idea and more um, values to confirm this uh, the capture and conversion, uh, the integration of both units. Uh, yeah, well, I, I would like to thank you all for uh, attending the conference and uh, for sure if you have more questions or if you are interested in uh, like uh, exploring this uh, uh, alternative way to to integrate this capture and conversion units, uh, please, uh, we are we will be very happy to to uh, uh, attending your emails with your comments and questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for all the comments and I think we they are really good questions. So uh, Omar presented uh, one project under this Carbon UT consortium. Uh, and uh, so we are mainly working on R&D for carbon and hydrogen value chains. And Omar just presented uh, part of it, including uh, CO2 capture and uh, integrated system of CO2 capture conversion through electrochemical reactions. Now we are looking at the several products as listed here and Omar uh, mentioned them as part of the presentation. So, so far this uh, Carbon UT consortium has uh, uh, five members and we started it last, uh, last year. And uh, so one of the applications we are thinking after this uh, format generation from its capsule CO2 is uh, to use the format, formic acid as a hydrogen carrier, uh, utilization for storage, transportation, and delivery of high pressure hydrogen gas. And also, uh, format uh, was proposed for the first time as novel carbon carrier in our group. And uh, we are use, proposing to use it as a uh, uh, carbon carrier for surface and also subsurface applications, including uh, uh, EOR. And also we have a very interesting topic on aqueous nanobubble dispersion of CO2. This is another way to uh, include the CO2 in the aqueous phase. And uh, we hope we are going to have uh, uh, another webinar on this topic very soon. And also we are working on CO2 storage in tight formation and uh, uh, carbon emission reduction in heavy oil bitumen recovery uh, processes mainly in Canada. So uh, if you are interested in any of these um, topics, please contact us.